CDMA and GSM, the two most common mobile phone technologies, offer an insurmountable barrier. They're the reason that old AT&T phones won't work on Verizon's network and vice versa. But, in the end, what does CDMA versus GSM imply for you? CDMA, Co-Division Multiple Access, and GSM, Global System for Mobiles, are abbreviations for two older radio technologies used in cell phones, also known as 2G and 3G. This article was first published in 2012, and it was updated during the 2010s, when it was critical to understand the differences between these two technologies. However, by 2022, it will be imperative to abandon CDMA and GSM. Those networks are being phased out. If your phone only supports 2G or 3G, you should upgrade to a 4G or 5G phone as soon as possible. AT&T has already decommissioned its 2G GSM network and it just announced that it will decommission its 3G GSM slash UMTS network in February 2022. T-Mobile will discontinue 3G GSM slash UMTS service in July 2022. It hasn't established a time frame for when 2G will be phased out, but it has drastically lowered its coverage and quality. On March 31, 2022, T-Mobile will shut down the 3G CDMA network that certain Sprint and Boost users use. Verizon's 3G CDMA network will be decommissioned on December 31, 2022. These networks are being turned down to levels primarily meant to support devices like electric meters and vending machines in their final years. Even before the formal shutdowns, 2G and 3G reception and call quality will most certainly be poor. It's now a 4G LTE world, with 5G on the horizon. It's time to upgrade, no matter how much you love your old phone. Yes, there are still some 2G and 2G slash 3G phones for sale, particularly unlocked GSM phones. Do not purchase them. They'll work inefficiently, and soon they won't be able to work at all. Weep not for CDMA and GSM. They've lived a long time. Sprint has a 25-year-old CDMA network. In 1995, the first GSM network was launched in the United States. There are now more effective ways to utilize our limited airwaves. 1 gigabit, 2 gigabits, 3 gigabits, 4 gigabits, 5 gigabits. When cell phone companies refer to a G, they're referring to a wireless technology generation. Each generation is capable of supporting more users and transferring more data. Analog cellular phones were the first generation. Carriers had various competing alternatives when switching to 2G digital networks in the 1990s, some of them went out, but CDMA and GSM are the two 2G camps that have lasted. During the 2000s, they remained divided thanks to the third generation of cellular technology, which improved data speeds but remained incompatible. In principle, the CDMA slash GSM separation ended in 2010, when all operators migrated to LTE, a single global 4G technology. However, the distinction remained because phones still required access to older 2G and 3G networks, which were mostly used for voice conversations. Voice calling over 4G was first introduced by AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon in 2014, however it took some time. Voice over 4G is currently supported by all four carriers. Carriers are now deploying 5G, which will be a single worldwide standard termed 5G NR after a few false starts. The development of 5G is still in its infancy. It doesn't have genuine nationwide coverage yet, and you can't make voice calls over it. However, 4G LTE is now fairly mature, and if you're still on 2G or 3G, upgrading to a 4G compatible phone should be painless. Compatibility does not imply conformity to a single standard. LTE, or long-term evolution, is a 4G wireless protocol that is widely used around the world. It is used by all U.S. carriers. C3G versus 4G, what's the difference? For further information. What's the difference between the two? Furthermore, all of the carriers adhere to the same 5G standard. See our 5G explainer for additional information. So, you think that'd make everyone compatible, right? Wrong. Three things are required to be compatible. It's like speaking the same language if you're utilizing the same technology. To support the same frequency bands, the ability to tune to the appropriate channel. To gain access to the network. 
everyone will utilize the same radio technology in the 4G and 5G worlds, but they may not have the same channels, and carriers may not allow other carriers' equipment to be used on their networks. The most significant issue is frequency band compatibility. Different radio channels are utilized by different carriers, therefore one carrier's phone model may not contain channels used by other carriers. This is a common issue when traveling across foreign boundaries, as evidenced by the Samsung Galaxy S26 different international models. 4G devices that have not been certified by Verizon or AT&T have problems making calls or sending text messages over those networks. They'll connect and get data, but they won't be able to make phone calls. When AT&T shuts down 3G, it has a list of phones that will work. Many popular phones now support all three main carriers' LTE networks, but not all. All carriers support the Motorola Moto G4, E4, and later, Samsung Galaxy S7 and later, OnePlus 8 and later, and Google Pixel phones. All iPhone 6 and subsequent models are compatible with all LTE networks. Yes, things are more complicated now than they were in the 2G era. GSM had the advantage of requiring the network to accept a phone if both the phone and the carrier followed the standard and the phone supported the appropriate channels. That is no longer the case. Which CDMA carriers are there? What exactly is GSM? Verizon, US Cellular, and the old Sprint network, now owned by T-Mobile, all use CDMA in the United States. GSM was utilized by AT&T and T-Mobile. GSM was utilized by the majority of the remainder of the world. GSM's global adoption was aided by the fact that the technology was mandated by legislation in Europe in 1987, and GSM was developed by an industry consortium. Qualcomm owns the majority of what we refer to as CDMA. Third parties were able to produce GSM equipment at a lower cost as a result of this. So, why did so many carriers in the United States choose CDMA? Timing. CDMA was the newest, hottest, and quickest technology when Verizon's predecessors and Sprint moved from analog to digital in 1995 and 1996. It had more capacity, better call quality, more promise than the GSM network of the time. GSM caught up, but those carriers' courses had already been established. Switching from CDMA to GSM is possible. In Canada, Bell and TELUS did it to have access to a wider range of off-the-shelf GSM phones. However, Verizon and T-Mobile are concentrating on 4G and 5G rather than 3G. Rather than switching, they are retiring the existing networks. Why are 2G and 3G networks being shut down? Everyone is scrolling, snapping, texting, FaceTiming, and other social media activities. The demand for mobile data continues to grow. The airwaves are inefficiently used in 2G and 3G, CDMA and GSM. 4G and 5G can pack more data into each hertz of airwaves and combine channels more easily for more efficient operation. As a result, carriers are retiring older, less efficient technologies in favor of modern networks that better utilize a limited resource. The carriers assume that the majority of users have already migrated to 4G as a result of their natural phone upgrades. For years, phones that can make 4G voice calls have been on the market. The iPhone 6 was Apple's first 4G voice iPhone, released in 2014. While having to replace an outdated phone due to a network shift is inconvenient, it is not unexpected. In the age of 4G LT in 5G, there is no technological difference between CDMA and GSM carriers. However, some cultural disparities exist. Verizon, in particular, makes it difficult to move your SIM card between smartphones without their authorization, whereas AT&T and T-Mobile make it easy. In 4G, this is an option. Verizon does it because it used to be able to manage which phones were on its network with CDMA and it wants to maintain as much control as possible. Because the GSM spec required AT&T and T-Mobile to accept anyone with a suitable phone throughout the GSM period, they don't.